Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on calcium signaling. In this video, what we're going to do is look at long-term depression, which is kind of the opposite of long-term potentiation. Uh, and we're going to look at it in uh, cerebellar Purkinje cells, where it is believed to underlie a lot of motor learning long-term depression in cerebellar Purkinje cells. And you might wonder, what is this doing in the playlist on calcium signaling? Well, um, it's believed that um, IP3 receptors play a very important role in uh, this um, long-term depression in cerebellar Purkinje cells. So, that's why it's in this playlist. Okay, so, let's Firstly, so the layout for this video, what I want to do is I firstly want to go over a bit of the structure of the cerebellar cortex. I then want to give you a brief bit of insight into the function of the cerebellum. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll look at um, how, um, how granule cells work in the cerebellum, how they synapse onto Purkinje cells. Then what we'll look at is climbing fibres and what their role is in the uh, cerebellum. And then finally, we'll put it all together and see how long-term depression works and then try and get some idea of why this is important for motor learning. Okay, so the cerebellar cortex structure then, firstly. So the cerebellar cortex has three layers. So there are three layers of the cerebellar cortex. Okay, so I'll draw three layers like so. The first, the most outer layer, is known as the molecular layer. So this is the molecular layer of the cerebellar cortex. And the layer beneath that is known as the Purkinje layer. And the layer below the Purkinje layer is known as the granule cell layer. Okay, right, so the granule cell layer. Right, and let me just show you on a larger diagram of the brain, what I'm actually looking at here. So, um, if we have the main uh, cerebral hemispheres here, so I'm looking at the brain from the side, so this is the frontal lobe here, the parietal lobe here, the temporal lobe back here, uh, sorry, the occipital lobe back here, and the temporal lobe down here. We then have the brain stem here, so the pons and the, med uh, the medulla, uh, going into the spinal cord down here. And then basically the cerebellum is this structure at the back, behind um, behind the brain stem here, and below uh, the cerebral hemispheres. So this is the cerebellum. And basically, uh, it, just like the cerebral hemispheres, it has uh, an outer layer known as the cortex, which is different from the, uh, from the stuff within, basically. Okay, and that's what I've drawn here. So effectively, what I've done is I've like taken a slice through this outer layer of cerebellum, and I'm looking at it up here. So effectively, this slice like this here, which I'll outline in pink, is what I'm looking at here. Okay, right. So if you actually look at this down the microscope, what do you see? Well, the Purkinje cell layer. Let's start off with this Purkinje cell layer here. Purkinje cells are absolutely giants, are absolute giants of cells. They are enormous great big things. They have huge great dendritic trees, so I'll try and draw one of these. So they have absolutely massive great dendritic trees extending up into the molecular layer up here. Okay, so these are the huge great dendritic trees of this massive great Purkinje cell here, which sits, it has its cell body in this Purkinje cell layer like this. And uh, it's often known, it's often described as looking like a tree. And I do recommend that you um, Google Purkinje cells uh, or in um, Google and you can see a picture of one of these down the microscope. They do look utterly incredible. And um, they have this huge tree free network of dendrites which go into the molecular layer. And what's incredible is that their entire tree of dendrites sits in a plane, and it sits in the sagittal plane, basically. So it's just like the way I've drawn it, basically. The, all these dendrites are in this plane. They are in this sagittal plane uh, down the brain. And, um, and they don't, basically. It doesn't send off a dendrite coming out of the um, out of the page, basically, all of the dendrites lie in a plane, roughly, of course, um, and um, 
that's why it's known as a tree-like sort of network, because if you look at it in this sagittal plane, it really does look like a tree. And then if you don't look at it in the sagittal plane, if you change your view to the coronal plane, you're just seeing a slice of the tree effectively, and you don't see uh, the amazing sort of same um, spread out dendrites, basically. Right, so then what happens is that this Purkinje cell sends its axon down into um, into uh, the depths of the cerebellum, and that axon will then leave the cerebellum, and we'll talk about what it will do in a moment when we talk about the actual function of the cerebellum. So there's the Purkinje cells. Now, the next important cell is the granule cells. So granule cells are much, much more tiny. So here's a little granule cell, and it sends up its axon up into the molecular layer. And then what happens is this axon um, moves uh, in a very specific direction. It moves straight out of the page. So its axon is basically transverse to the plane. It, it, its axon will move in a direction that is transverse to the plane in which the Purkinje cells are sitting. So the Purkinje cells have their dendritic trees in this sagittal plane. Uh, so I'll just say that we are looking at a sagittal plane, by the way, sagittal plane, whereas the uh, granule cells send up their axon into the molecular layer, and their axon then moves transverse or orthogonally to the plane in which the, um, uh, in which the uh, dendritic trees of the Purkinje cells sit, i.e. it's going to move as though straight out of the page. So it's going to move along there, and basically what it does is it synapses with absolutely loads of these um, Purkinje cells. So there'll, there'll be another Purkinje cell sitting in the other planes above and below this uh, plane that I've drawn here. And basically, as, this, um, as the axon of this granule cell moves along, it will be synapsing with loads of the dendritic trees of all these different Purkinje cells. Okay, so this is a granule cell here. All right. Okay, so those are the two main um, cells of the, um, of the cerebellar cortex. Now let's talk about the basic function of the cerebellum. Uh, so I'll just sort of try and denote that that's coming out of the page and synapsing with our Purkinje cells. Okay, so what happens is that, um, well, let's talk about the basic function of the cerebellum. The cerebellum's basic function is to calibrate motor activity. So basically what happens is when you move, the brain sends down the motor plan to the cerebellum, and the cerebellum then basically calibrates that motor plan. So what do I mean by a motor plan? Well, uh, when you want to make a movement, when you want to wave to someone, uh, to make that actually happen, you need to fire off a certain combination of action potentials. So you have absolutely loads of axons going down to your arm, and uh, they'll activate different muscles. And, you know, you need to activate different muscles uh, to differing degrees in order to uh, actually produce the waving movement. And so you need a huge, great combination of action potentials. So you need to activate the right combination of neurons. And also you need to activate them at the right time to produce the waving movement. So you need incredible coordination of which axons are activated and when, basically. That combination of action potentials is what I mean by a motor plan. So, the brain generates one of these combinations of action potentials when it decides that it wants to make a movement. And basically, it sends it down to the cerebellum, and then the cerebellum sort of looks at this motor plan, this combination of action potentials, and alters it in some way, calibrates it, sends it back to the brain, sends its calibration instructions back to the brain, and, uh, well, to the the cerebral cortex, I should say, because the cerebellum is part of the brain. It sends it back to the cerebral uh, cortex. This means, the, you know, the bigger brain, if you like. The cerebellum actually means the little brain, and cerebrum means the, the brain. Um, so, um, the, um, it sends it back to the cerebral cortex, and then that modification occurs, and then the motor plan is sent out to the body. So, the cerebellum is involved in ca calibrating uh, motion. So, what happens is that the neurons which bring the information of the motor plan into the cerebellum are known as mossy fibers. So, I'll draw a mossy fiber here. So, this is a mossy fiber here. And this basically brings in 
the information of uh, the motor plan. And of course, not one, uh, you know, a single one of them does not carry the information. But the mo loads of mossy fibers come in and they carry the information of the motor plan. Then they sign up onto these granule cells, and the granule cells sign up onto the Purkinje cells. And the Purkinje cells are then what this all of the cerebellar cortex then analyzes this motor plan, and the Purkinje cells then send out information back to the uh, cerebral hemisphere, uh, cerebral hemispheres basically. So the mossy fibers bring in the motor plan from the cerebral cortex. And uh, the Purkinje cells then send out the calibration back to the cerebral cortex. Okay, right. Uh, so, ha that's the basic function of the cerebellum. So, what we now need to look at is one last cell in this. Uh, there's one last important cell, and that's called the climbing fibres. So, there are two main uh, inputs to the cerebellum. The mossy fibres, which bring in this information concerning the motor plan from the cerebral cortex. And then, another type of neuron called a mossy fibre, which I'm going to draw in green. Because mossy fibres have a very unusual structure. So, they come in. Here comes the axon of this climbing fibre. Sorry, I said mossy fibre. I mean climbing fibre. So this climbing fibre comes in, and the reason it's called a climbing fibre is that it wraps its way around this Purkinje cell all the way up, wraps its way around, wraps its way around these dendrites, like so. So it's a climbing fibre. It's like a, it's like ivy. It's like creeper, if you call it that. It, it's wrapping itself around this Purkinje cell, just like the Purkinje cell is a tree. So ivy is a very good uh, analogy here. Um, and um, it makes connections with this Purkinje cell all over, loads of synaptic connections all over the place, basically. And uh, generally they are, um, they are extra synaptic because they're, they're well, at uh, the points where this mossy fibre is going to synapse onto the Purkinje cells, they are not typical synapses. The typical structure of a synapse is this sort of synapse that you have between the granule cell and the Purkinje cell where basically the granule cell has an axon terminal which then synapses onto a dendritic spine on the other neuron. So let me show this. So if this is a, a dendrite here, then generally what you'll have is a little process coming off called a dendritic spine, and then the axon terminal will synapse onto that dendritic spine. So this is an axon terminal of a granule cell, axon terminal of a granule cell, and um, this is a dendritic spine of a Purkinje cell. The difference between um, these sort of synapses and the synapses that the mossy fibre makes is the mossy fibre doesn't connect to dendritic spines. Instead, it just connects all over the place, basically. It connects not to dendritic spines is the important thing. Okay, so what is the function of these mossy fibres? Uh, not mossy fibres, this climbing fibre. I do apologise for that. Uh, dendritic spine. Let me just make this crystal clear by labelling this as a climbing fibre. It is not a mossy fibre. The mossy fibres are the ones uh, bringing the information in from the cerebral cortex. These ones that sign up with the granule cells are the mossy fibres. The climbing fibres are these ones that come in, and they do not come from the cerebral cortex. They come from the inferior olive of the medulla. So if this is the medulla here, on either side of the medulla you have a little portion known as the inferior olive. It's very distinctive when you actually are looking at a medulla. And this is where uh, the mossy fibre, uh, the climbing fibres come from. So these climbing fibres come in to the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle, and then they go up to the cerebral cortex. Right. Okay. Uh, cerebellar cortex. Right. So um, these climbing fibres are wrapping themselves themselves around these Purkinje cells. And what is the function of these climbing fibres? Well, basically. When um, they're, they're very important, they're believed to be very important in motor learning. So we've discussed that the role of the cerebellum is to take in motor plans and produce calibrations that mean that motor function is uh, very precise. So these, these calibrations are what allow you to catch balls and things. So when someone throws you a ball, the cerebral uh, cortex comes up with a motor plan, but basically it's rubbish. If the cerebral cortex was left to its own devices, you would end up with not a very good motor plan. So that motor plan is sent to the cerebellum, it calibrates it, and it makes it perfect so that you will be able to catch the ball.
Now, what happens if the calibration's wrong? What happens if you miss the ball? Well, basically, the brain uh, realizes that it's made a mistake, uh, and what happens is that the inferior olive basically f activates the climbing fibers, and the climbing fibers then go in. They, they sign up with these Purkinje cells, and what they do is they cause long-term, when they activate this um, Purkinje cell, what they cause is a long-term depression of the granule cells that were active at the same time as the, as the, um, as the climbing fiber was active, basically. So they weaken the synapses between the granule cells and the Purkinje cells, which caused that mistake. And that's believed to underlie how we learn in, in motor skills, basically, how we acquire motor skills. So I'll repeat it because it's worth repeating. Okay, so um, these granule cells um, are synapsing onto the Purkinje cells. The motor plan comes in and that is going to cause a certain output by these Purkinje cells, a certain calibration. But basically that calibration was not right. And if it's not right, what happens is these climbing fibers are activated. They make loads of synaptic contacts with these Purkinje cells. And when they do, when they activate the Purkinje cells, what happens is that all of the synapses between the granule cells and the Purkinje cells, which were active at the same time that the Purkinje cell becomes active, uh, that the climbing fiber becomes active, are weakened. You get weakening of the synapse, which means that the synaptic contact between that granule cell and the dendritic spine of the Purkinje cell becomes weaker, i.e. its ability to generate an EPSP, uh, an excitatory postsynaptic potential in this Purkinje cell, becomes weaker, i.e. if you stimulate the granule cell, the amount of, uh, to release um, glutamate onto this Purkinje cell, and we'll see this, um, this um, synaptic contact in more detail in a moment, but if you stimulate it to release glutamate onto this Purkinje cell, the, um, the response that you get in the Purkinje cell is reduced, basically. Um, uh, it, basically, the granule cell has less effect on the Purkinje cell. That's what's meant by long-term depression. The synapses become weaker. The ability of the presynaptic neuron to affect the postsynaptic neuron is reduced. So this is gets depressed, long-term depression, and it's only the synapses which were actually active at the time that the climbing fiber becomes active that are depressed, obviously. So you basically weaken the synapses that gave rise to this incorrect calibration signal, basically, and that's believed to underlie motor learning, uh, and how we can therefore go about improving our calibration, and then lead to us catching the ball next time, basically. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video.